So welcome to uh, another Budget Model Railways video on my shed layout number seven, I think. And what I thought I'd do is do a, a do a tour, do a tour of the layout and talk about some of the things. Um, a long while ago, I did a video on a perfect model railway, which upset a few people. But this is my ideal model railway. I've been doing it now for nine years, thanks to Douglas, and I've built enough layouts to know what I want. So this is not saying what's ideal or perfect for anybody else. But it's ideal or perfect for what I want from what I perceive to be a model railway layout. Now that's not saying that I'm right or anybody else should agree with me, but for me it's right. It's what makes me happy in a model railway. And I think that's what's got to be important. It's what makes you happy. Not what do the books tell you you've got to do, because for one thing a book would tell me I can't make this, because the books say that four foot by six foot is the minimum for uh, an oval layout. And this is five foot by two and a half foot. Um, so that's wrong. And they tell you not to use second hand track, which this is all second hand track. And they tell you that things won't go around first radius. And everything I've got will go around first radius, including my very large diesels and steam locos. So that's the first important thing that this is smaller uh, and does a lot of things that the books tell you you can't do. Um, but it works for me in the space I've got. And I think that's the most important thing when you're doing a railway is what space have you got and what can you make to fit that space. So why is this an ideal layout for me? Well it's got many of the features I like and I'll talk you through those features. So I like a nice signal box and that's the day pole kit painted up. Easily the nicest signal box that I've had. Uh, very underrated, don't know why people don't use them more. I've got a level crossing because I think a lot of railway layouts should have a level crossing. And I've got a nice station area. Again, the Daypole buildings painted to a slightly different way. Um, with a platform canopy, ratio kit. And I've got a passing platform that will take a couple of coaches. And I've got a bay platform that will take a small coach and a loco or a rail bus. And because an idea I had when I was sort of building it, I've also got another platform there, which I can run round. And because the runaround loop is there, it means I can use this layout not only as a runaround, but as an end-to-end. -end. I can use it as a country terminus. I can run trains into here and shunt as if this line wasn't here or this line was going somewhere else, which is what happened on some country junctions. And I can do that because off the back, there's a hidden point in there and it goes to a fiddle yard, which means I can run it fiddle yard to terminus. So already I've got an oval watch trains go round or I've got a terminus where I can run trains in and out. And I've also then got a fairly extensive goods yard so that I can run goods trains in and out from either direction because of this line. So that's lots of operating potential. And the kickback siding means I sometimes have to clear the coal wagons out of the way, which is what happened in real life. Coal takes a long time to unload, cattle wagons don't, so you might have to move them. So I've got this rather nice station. I've got a second day pole building there that I shortened. I've got a little loco servicing area. So I've got a water tower and I've got a coal um, uh, station there. I've got a little signal box and a little hut. I love the little, um, little vans, the little uh, utilities. Um, because I remember my dad talking about them, as I do remember him talking about um, light utilities, which were these things. From a railway point of view, I've got an end loading dock, which I can use to unload vehicles and, and end loaded wagons. I've got an office. I've got a waybridge with waybridge and office. I've got a good shed, lock up good shed. I've got a provender store and I've got a cattle dock. So that's lots of operating potential. Over here I've got a coal yard and a crane. The crane's important because it's my dad's. He had it on a railway in the 1960s, late 1960s. He stopped doing railways then and went into military modelling, which is what I went into until when Doug was nine and he wanted to do railways. So that's a nice little nod. The coal yard works quite well. It's got a little office, a couple of trucks and some coal staves. And I've got a spare siding, which completely changes the ability to shunt because it's somewhere to put wagons out of the way while you move other things. So there's a lot of operating potential there and a lot of nice little features. I've got a wood, because I always wanted a wood. 
Not as big as the one that inspired me on a continental engage layout, but there's 10 trees there, so it is a wood. I've got a back scene that works. Again, it wasn't quite the one I wanted, but it's what I had. And by blending in hedges and trees, somehow you don't almost notice the join. That one works best because you're looking over a hedge and up the field where the perspective is just right as it happens to another hedge. And over here, again, I've hidden the join with hedges and trees. And we painted everything sky blue. So it's a little bit more of a complete world. And at some point, I've got a couple of really nice aeroplanes that are going to hang from there. So I've got aeroplanes flying over because I spent 40 years making model aeroplane kits. And then there's a few other little nods. So there's the start right lorry because I spent 17 years selling start right shoes, among other things. So that's a little reminder of that because I do try and make my layouts a little bit autobiographical. Hence, the lost army officers with the map, because I'm an army cadet officer and have been for 22 years. Um, and my dad was always interested in the army because of his national service. Although I say they're lost because officers famously get lost. Oh dear, lost my focus, there we go. In fact, I'm really good at map reading, but there you go. So we've then got a bit of a pond, because I like making ponds, just cheap varnish and stuff. And then we've got another little, if you like, memory bit because the half timbered building there came again from my dad's layout, as did the little cottage on the end. The pub there came from the late John Winterburn's railway, who very kindly, his family donated quite a lot of bits to me when I helped him sell his railway collection. I've got a little hardware shop made from the day pole kit and I've got um, a little garage and that's a little nod to my dad and John, who worked together for Caffins in the motor trade for a great many years. And then in the window is a motorbike. Oh, we lost the focus. Let's see if we can get it. Sorry for the shaky camera work. So we got a motorbike in the window because I rode motorbikes for a great many years and spent a long while with my nose pressed up against various dealers. And that fire engine's just because I liked it and I bought it. And the church came off the very first layout that me and Doug Maver made that we exhibited, Greenhill Hall. It's one of the first buildings I ever made. So there's quite a lot of going on here, little nods. But this is why I like this layout, because it does everything I want it to do. I can run all my big locos round, not a problem. I don't care that they don't look right. I don't care that they overhang the first radius. Um, I can only run four at the most, five on a good day, but that's fine. Um, because I don't worry about things about eras and locations and all that sort of thing. I just run what I like. That's one of my favourite locos. That's the County Class D49. And actually, I've been trying to get some other projects off the ground, restoring some old layouts and toying with new ones. But I just keep stopping and running trains on this instead because it does what I want it to do. And I think that's the important thing sometimes when you're um, doing a layout, think what you want on the layout. I was advising somebody the other day who messaged me on Instagram and I said, you know, you've got to start firstly with what size have you got? And he had a big size. And it's then, well, what do you want in a model railway layout? Now I kind of knew that certain things I always wanted, nice country station, level crossing, signal box, bridge. I like a bridge on a layout. Um, and I knew, oh, I've made some really nice town layouts that I like, but I knew I wanted a country station. Although I've got a little bit of a nod with the village. So it's knowing what you want. And I've discovered that the combination is best. Sometimes, a lot of the time with me, I just want to watch locos go around. Perhaps I'm sad, perhaps I've got the attention span of a goldfish, but I'm quite happy watching them go around here. If I run them slow enough, it just doesn't seem to bother me that I'm seeing them again. Because I've said before about having different scenes. So I can see it come through the wood, past the goods yard. I can see it run past the station. And then I can watch it go past the signal box, over the level crossing, and beginning to come 
through the embankment there and to the embankment over the back. And that's an idea I got from a layout, but I, I thought that's what he'd done, but he hadn't. But I like it. It means that it hides the fact to some degree it's an oval. But rather than have a hill that runs all the way along the back, it goes into a cutting and you just catch a glimpse of the train and the wagons and the coaches as it goes along. So for me, this layout works. It's perfect for me. It's ideal for me. Yes, I've got to add a few more things and finish it off. But as an operating layout, it works. I've got our own little simple controller there. And Doug uh, printed me one in bright colours. There's only six wires to control it. It could be two, but because of the two switchback sidings, it's six. But that's it. It's just DC. I don't need DCC to do what I want to do. I can only run one train at a time anyway. So DCC would be pretty pointless in all honesty and not worth the extra expense. I've got space underneath for my rather too large loco and coach collection. Coaches. It's not as organized as I'd like it to be, but it will be. Locomotives uh, and a kind of mixed and a few more locomotives. I had too many locomotives. So for me, this is a good space. It's insulated. It's warmer in here than the conservatory. It's warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer than the loft. And it's easier for me to just dive down here for a little while without the dis uh, upheaval in the house of going up in the loft. So yes, for me, this has turned out after a number of years to be exactly what I wanted. And it shouldn't be for all sorts of reasons. It's too small, um, et cetera, et cetera. But I would say to a lot of people that say perhaps they can't get a railway, mm -hmm. stop and think. Don't be over ambitious, think what you want. Yes, I know there's a lot of compression here. That platform should be three times the length and the goods yard's too small. But as you've heard me say before, I'm a war gamer or used to be, where compression is a way of life because real combat ranges you just can't use them in a, in a war games board. So to me, compression on railways doesn't offend me. It doesn't bother me in the least. It looks quite natural to me. And that really is a lovely looking loco, isn't it? Yes, I couldn't run in some of the newer locos around here that are all designed for second and third radius only, even when they could go around first radius. Um, and the very long coaches do look a little bit silly, but they're pretty hidden by the bends. So for me, it works. Um, and you might find now for a while that you get lots of videos of locos running because over the years, what I've tended to do is videos on how to build things. And one of the reasons I didn't do a lot of how to build videos for this layout was because I only used the techniques I'd already used before. Paper mache for the hills. Poundland filler for the rock faces. Poundland uh, varnish for the water, scouring pads to make the hedges, just green scouring pads dipped in scatter, wonderful hedges, much cheaper, Trip trees from China, yes I know I could make them a lot more realistic but I don't care, um, I like my vehicles and so I've got cars scattered around, I've got a few more soldiers hidden away including two slogging up the hill carrying rifles and packs something a number of us are familiar with, if only in small ways. And for me, I like the station. Um, the Daypole buildings are, in many ways, more in keeping. The Met Calf are too big for these smaller layouts. They take over. The Daypole work really well. And they're cheap. It's a freight train going around. So there we go. I thought you might appreciate a tour of the layout. Um, and a little explanation of, of why it works for me. It won't work for everyone. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who would like to send Mr. Angry of Tunbridge Wells replies to this saying this is wrong and that's wrong. But really a model railway should be about what makes you happy. You know, um, a wonderful friend on uh, Instagram whose daughter has got, um, who's got a pink and purple layout with pink and purple mushroom station buildings and houses. To me, that's just wonderful. That's what Model Railways is all about. Um, 
it should not be about I mean I read a book once and you know it said the starting point is decide what era and location you're going to model you can't even start a layout until you've decided this and yet I've been building layouts for nine years including four or five exhibition layouts and I've never once modeled an era or a location I've just made to me what are model railway layouts and then I run whatever I like I read a very sad thing the other day of a, a gentleman in America who said he'd sold a particular loco, one of his favourites, because he couldn't run it on his layout. What do you mean couldn't, I felt like saying? Something was physically stopping you picking it up, taking it out of the box, putting it on the track and running it. So how are you physically prevented? I've had French TGVs running on this layout so I can see what they look like. So that to me is what it's all about. Run what you like, make what you like and enjoy it. So I hope you've enjoyed the guided tour. Um, I know a lot of you have heard my philosophy before. If you do like what we do, please share it widely on Instagram or whatever. Please let people know that we're out there and what we do because we do seem to inspire quite a lot of people uh, to do this kind of railway modelling. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching as always. Thank you for supporting us. It's always appreciated. Um, and look forward to, I think, some more trains running videos on my model railway layout. And I'll end with just some shots of this wonderful D49 County class. It's even a great shunter. And I didn't pay very much for it a couple of years ago when it was on special offer. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.